Welcome to Visions of Early Florida, where we discuss the early literature of Florida with leading scholars from around the country and really across the globe. Today, we are talking with Dr. Timothy Johnson, who is the Craig and Audrey Thorne Distinguished Professor of Religion at Flagler College. Um, Dr. Johnson focuses on what he calls the long Middle Ages in Florida. His background is in middle, medieval and Renaissance studies, particularly through the Franciscans, and as it impacts the Tamuqua people. Today he'll be talking about Prince, he'll be talking about Francisco Pereja, one of the early priests to come to Florida, and his Tamuqua native co-editors and authors. Dr. Dr. Johnson, could you tell us a little bit about Pereja and then perhaps lead us through a passage to help us understand their collaboration more? Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm delighted to speak of Father Perea. Father Perea was a Franciscan of the observant tradition who was born in a small town by the name of Union, which is about, in today's terms, about an hour and a half drive east of Madrid. He entered the Franciscan order. We don't know what happened to him early on as a friar, but we believe very well likely that he went to Mexico where he worked there with indigenous peoples and began to understand the craft of translation and working with indigenous peoples and texts. He came to Florida. We know he was here by 1599. He was uh, immersed into the work of the friars that had been going on for at least a decade. For a decade, the friars had been working with the Wale, Tumuqua, different groups in the area. And in this process that had preceded him, people had been working on not so much text, but pieces of paper, if you will, where they were writing down word lists, they were writing down doctrinal statements, working with their Tumuqua co-editors and co-writers to try to put this together. What happens then is Father Perea, with others, gathers these uh, texts, if you will, these notes, and begins to uh, edit them together with his Tumuqua uh, colleagues. What's interesting here, and we always want to stress this, is Fra Perea, or Fra, or Friar Perea, is learning Tumuqua, and the Tumuqua are learning Spanish, and perhaps even a bit of Latin, because they're also going to church. What happens then in the early years of Perea's work here in Florida is he puts together a number of texts, catechisms, he then becomes the provincial, that is the leader of the province of St. Helens here. And after serving as provincial, he then goes to Mexico and produces another series of texts along with his uh, Tumuco co-editors and uh, co-authors. So what we have is not just a series of works, but we can actually see the arc, if you will, or the trajectory of Franciscan work here through his works because his early works start with simple catechisms about faith and his recently discovered 1628 catechism is on liturgy and attendance of mass. So we get a incredible insight, not only into uh, the theology, if you will, of this man, but also the arc of what it would be to produce texts over a period of time in a new area that had uh, recently been evangelized. So what I would like to do, if I could, is move in to take a look at uh, one of his texts that uh, I find really fascinating. And of course, there's so many that we could choose, but I would point out right now that I'm working with the Confessionario. So if you were able to look at the text, you would see uh, in the presented text, I'm looking most at the text that's in the middle of the three texts that are lined up. If you look at uh, the text there, you'll see on the left-hand side, there is a, a text that's earlier. It's from a medieval text. And then in the middle, you'll see uh, the translation of Pareja's text. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see the translation of the Tumuqua. Remember, these books are written in Tumuqua and Spanish. So let's take a deep dive into this one particular text because I think it's fascinating. First of all, you can see already, if you look at the text, that the person there is being referred to in a way that is going to change. So we see first uh, that person who's carrying the book is a demon. That's in, in the early uh, earlier Latin text. And then if you follow that through, you can see how now the demon becomes a hideous giant. 
And then by the time you get to the Tuukwa, you find that he's a very tall man. What we're watching here as we proceed is the enculturation of texts in new cultures. So the story, which comes from the Latin, is now being worked into the Spanish in the Tumuqua. It's important to note here that the friars know Tumuqua enough to understand that the text is being changed. And so what we have is this collaboration where different cultures working with different languages are moving back and forth to focus on what's important and what's not important in the story. So for it to be enculturated among the Spanish, you'll see this really emphasis on the demonic. This is a part of that period of time. That is not so much the reference in importance um, in the Tumuqua and actually in the Latin as well. Yes, demon is present, but the focus is not there. Notice also in the Latin on the, on the uh, left-hand side, you'll see a really interesting work uh, here where you're looking at what's called the uh, Latin historical present, where it says that Augustine discovers, Augustine orders. So that in the Latin historical present is made to grab the reader so the reader is caught up in Augustine's action right here, right now. We lose that when we go to, to the Spanish text. And now we, of course, have a big, very big book. It's not just a big book. It's a very big book with a hideous, hideous giant carrying this. The story uh, basically is Augustine sees this demon, this big man, this hideous creature walking around with a book and the person or the creature says it's filled with sins and Augustine says, am I in there? You got something on me, so to speak. And understand too that this is being related and even included in preaching within the Tumukan culture, which is slowly becoming uh, literate in any number of instances, the Tumukwa are learning these languages. And so the emphasis on writing in a book is not accidental because we know uh, from uh, one of the visitors that Tumukwa children had books uh, when he went to visit. So the focus on the literary is crucial in this text. Uh, notice at the bottom of the Spanish, we see the word serpent there in reference to uh, the demon. If you look on the left, you'll see there's no reference to the serpent in the uh, Latin. And interestingly enough, there's no reference to the serpent in the Tumuqua. So when we're comparing texts, we ask what, what's happening here, because certainly the friar who was reading the Tumuqua, uh, working with his co-editors like Pre would know. I mean, if you know uh, Florida and if you live in Florida, you certainly will learn the names for snakes and that would notice looking at the Tumuqua that the snake's not there. So what happens here? It's not that the Tumuqua will not mention snakes, but the issue here is the Spanish have identified the snake, the serpent, as the image of evil. And by the time you move into the Tumuqua, that move is very difficult to make because not all snakes uh, for the Tumuqua and others are evil. Some are good, some are bad. Anyone who knows, lives in Florida knows there are good snakes and, and bad snakes. And so we see here a, a very interesting uh, dynamic going on between the Tumuqua authors and the Franciscan authors here. In, in, we're talking, of course, of Francisco Perea, where the emphasis is, is trying to work the story into the Tumuqua culture in a way that's acceptable to the Tumuqua. And with here, we see that the friars are letting go of certain concepts. It's not so much particular concepts, it's the basic idea. Another thing I'd point out too, is both in the Latin and in the Spanish, you have reference to Compline. Compline is a liturgical office. In other words, that was part of what priests and brothers and sisters would pray in the evening. By the time you get to the Tumuqua, the Tumuqua are not clerics. Uh, they're not uh, following strictly the liturgical uh, uh, background of the friars. They are praying, of course, but the issue is not did they fulfill their obligation to pray that uh, official prayer. They just forgot to pray at night. So what we have here in this confessionario from 1613 is, I think, a, just a small but really fascinating example of what was taking place and would take place for decades here in Florida. And we know uh, that these books existed and were in circulation, at least the confessionario, until um, you know the uh, mid-1700s. 
Well, thank you very much, Dr. Johnson. And we encourage others, our readers and listeners, to to, to look at some of Dr. Johnson's other extensive writings about the Temuco, about the exchange with the Franciscans, as well as the scholarship of Dr. George Aaron Broadwell, who generously provided the translation there. Dr. Johnson, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. It was a delight. My pleasure. Thank you.